<laughs> okay, go go ahead. I uh, <laughs> it's all yours. Okay, uh, we are now recording. Um, or have been probably recording. That was fun. Um, uh, welcome to the Corpus Weekly Sync of uh, March 16th. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with upcoming ship releases. This um, is actually my update. Yeah, the Corpus RC is a bit late. Um, we're trying to get out the release by uh, the end of this month. Um, so we'd hope to have the, release, the RC out by Friday. Um, uh, coordination is a bit tricky. We've been having like synchronous meetings constantly, like yeah, synchronous half time. Um, but it's only semi-synchronous because we're all in different time zones. Um, so we get a good chunk of the day together, but it's not, I don't know, it's not like being the simplest. So yeah, the coronavirus is a bit tricky here, but we're moving, or doing our best. Um, uh, with our couple of patches, patches still in flight, uh, you're working on the, a, um, a key store factor to uh, avoid issues with like file system or like system specific names in uh, key names affecting uh, IPFS. So currently we store them unencoded, we just drop them in the file system, uh, but some files don't like certain types of names. Uh, so um, we are changing these two base 32 base encoded names. Uh, Submit gateway should be landing soon as well. Uh, we have one little tiny bit swap patch that I think still needs to be merged, I'm not sure. Um, but everything else there is looking pretty good. We've been running on a gateway, or staging gateway, and it's looking fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh, I forgot something else. Um, well, what can I have later? Uh, the, the idea is that uh, the um, uh, address filters aren't quite working as well as we had hoped, uh, and they are kind of broken. Uh, so we have to fix that. It's a bug we introduced in the BP recently. Uh, yeah, we're still finishing up some final DHT patches. We should open RC by the end of the week. Uh, if you have any last minute changes in GoFest, please make them now, but please only make them if you actually need to go GoFest. Otherwise, uh, please hold off uh, until uh, like, start, well, April when we actually have finished cutting release. Test ground. Do we have anyone from test ground? We do not have anyone from test ground. Okay, nothing has happened on test ground this week. Uh, so, no. um, much has happened in Tesco this week, uh, but we don't have any updates, I guess. Uh, unless I'm going to touch something. Okay, thank you. Um, so, content routing. Uh, can you talk about JSI BFS for a second? Oh, yes. Um, so, we wanted to ship uh, the pin speed improvements in the next version. Um, but it's looking like it's going to take a little bit longer to resolve that. Um, so probably going to try to ship a bug fix release um, next, next well, this week at some point. As soon as basically as soon as we finish merging MFS into the core, because uh, we've got a bunch of um, yeah bugs that have been fixed and it's all a bit smaller. Um, so it'd be really great to get a point release out. You know, hopefully this week. Content routing, uh, Hydra, David, or Alan. Great, Alan. Okay, uh, Hydra, the, we're almost done with stage one, uh, and I've tagged a 0 0.1 uh, release, I guess, uh, for Hydra. Uh, we've got, uh, thanks to uh, Peter, we've got, uh, we've got balanced peer ID generation, so we don't just generate rando peer IDs. We actually generate a bunch of peer IDs that are equally kind of distributed uh, amongst the, the, the bit space, I guess you could call it. Um, so thanks for that. We've got, um, David is working on um, providing for things that we've asked for. That's still in flight, but you know, that should, well, might land hopefully soon because it's not, it's not too big, but it's not blocking. So that's good. We've got Prometheus metrics. Um, uh, they are collecting uh, some bits and pieces that we want to collect. So, uh, so that's that's awesome. Um, and uh, we do like, yeah. There's a I did a little bit of work on the UI. So that actually just pulls the uh, it's all of its information from Prometheus Metrics end endpoint that we expose, which is super rad. Uh, so we don't have a separate kind of um, stats collecting uh, process for that, which is nice. 
so it's been tagged and we're trying to, well, I'm trying to deploy it. I'm just figuring out uh, Google Cloud um, Kubernetes things and um, like Dockers and, and stuff. Um, and just trying to get it, get a version deployed uh, with a few heads. Uh, and then ramp it up from there, basically. So um, we're we're having fun, um, and um, yeah, it's going well so far. Anything to add, David? Yeah. So you for yeah, like you pretty much covered it all. I guess just like to highlight next steps. So other than getting it deployed and start seeing some sets getting out of it, uh, which hopefully gets done today or tomorrow, uh, the next big chunky items are the shared routing table and so right now there's like four proposals on how to do it on the table uh, it will require some design thinking um like th there's a lot of input so it's not that we are looking for feedback we just need to think more about it um and then the other thing is the shared data store across multiple machines uh we are thinking of using just like a like a standard database like postgres i believe that jeremy implemented the a, a Backhand in, in Postgres a long time ago. Okay, that's a thumbs up. Is it still up to date, Stephen? Can, can, can we trust it? I think it's reasonably up to date. I don't think it has been extremely tested. Um, I've been updating it, but haven't been like thoroughly trashing it, like making sure that it works correctly. But I think it passes the the test suite. So, sweet. Okay, that that says a lot. Cool. So yeah, that will be the next two things starting next week. Um, but, uh, but hey, like progress is being made. That's, that's, that's what to Uh, is database for having uh, well, the database, it, it's going to be like half a day to the day, uh, just to get it tested. Uh, also require more like tinkering with internals. Um, and so, yeah, we, we haven't made a decision yet. We, we need to think more about it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Dean, do you have any updates? Uh, just that most of the DHT changes are uh, looking looking good. Um, just writing more tests now and trying to scale the tests so that they uh, we can somewhat plausibly emulate the network and what it will look like on day one when we roll out the changes to make sure that we don't break anything and make things perform at least as well as they are now, even for uh, people on the old network. I remember uh, you talking about some unit test issues. Uh, have we resolved those yet? Uh, Arsh is looking into those now. Excellent, thank you. Okay, then I think that's content routing. Um, hopefully we will be able to uh, land enough of these changes in the next uh, day or two to like start testing against live network. It's coming along well. Okay, so uh, I, oh, sorry, I posted a, a question like with regards to testing. I'm very curious to understand like how uh, what, what is the success rate like using test ground to test the DHT changes? Are we like being able to like run multiple uh, network topologies, like different network sizes, and like I is it being like stable right now or is well can you can you share that bit? So there are, yeah, I mean, running multiple network topologies requires defining multiple topologies and assuming that they make sense. So sure, we can do that, but like, there haven't been too many proposals of different topologies, so we've just been using the few that we have. Mm -hmm. um, the, the tests are supposed to be able to scale more. I haven't taken the newest test, which runs old DHT nodes against new DHT nodes um, in various different ways. I haven't scaled that up to, you know, thousands of nodes on Kubernetes yet. I'm just running them mm -hmm. locally and making sure those changes work and running into some issues with the synchronization service. Um, 
but hopefully we will get through those in the next you know day or so and see what happens when we throw it on kubernetes and if it falls over or not one gotcha. one thing we should think about a little bit is if there's a way to disconnect the various network topologies we can think about from the specific tests so that we can reuse those in other types of tests right like both like i've got some nodes that are old and some nodes that are new and then i have network connectivity that looks like you know whatever that seems like we will want to reuse it for each new feature yeah i mean probably if we can start defining them like right now they're defined like the topologies are effectively defined on libp2p nodes not dht nodes so again i, I think the the issue there is not so much can we do it but like what do we want to do given that we could do it Thank you so much for the update. If I may ask just like some numbers question. So are we still on like around a thousand containers as the limit for the Kubernetes cluster or have we managed to like bump the number up? I have no idea. Gotcha. Okay. Test ground team required for that answer. Sounds good. <laughs> And, and I guess just like to like so for the gossip sub testing, what we are thinking, if there, there is a container limit, we just like to spin multiple nodes within the same container, um, and and do some magic to tell other nodes do not use the IP as an identifier, but use something else. Well, you will you will run into <laughs> issues simulating things like latency because the sidecar is not designed for that. So oh, interesting. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, I'll look more into that. Yeah, it might actually just sort of work um, as long as you don't use local host. It might go out the right interface. I'm not sure how TC works. TC might just magically, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Subdomain gateways. Uh, it's ongoing review. I think uh, most of stuff is addressed. Uh, I just look at it and there are two topics that I need to address. One is uh, the way API is handling. Right now it's mounted on the subdomains and we don't want that. And the second one is additional validation before we redirect. So everything else seems to be uh, already on the PR. So I hope to do that like day tomorrow uh, so next Stephen can make another pass on this um, and in the meantime uh, adding support to companion I hope to make a release uh, this week to the beta channel make it as soon as possible because like for Chromium users that takes weeks so the sooner we land that uh, the sooner like hopefully we will be able to like coordinate go IPFS release with like companion which is actually capable of supporting that uh, so that's the plan yep. how long does it take to go from like marketing thing is better to actually releasing it like, <laughs> uh, okay if something is is better like you just press a button now it's released or oh, do they have a second no, delay? the thing is like it's a separate uh, extension ID we got a sep two extensions effectively uh, one is beta, one is stable. Uh, so I can like publish to stable just like one day later, as, and that will probably be what I will do. <laughs> just after. And then, oh, so, and then like cancel that one out if something goes wrong with the beta or something like that. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. The, the cool thing uh, is uh, like uh, for, uh, for Chromium Web Store, where we have like 25K of users. You, we, we can publish, but we can select only like uh, for the update to be published to only like 5%. Got it. Uh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. No, no, like uh, I usually the beta smoke testing on beta channel is enough. So, I would not worry about that. It's mostly like time consuming. That's why I want to paralyze this work this week. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, Dirk, it's swap. Yeah, so uh, this week just kind of closed out a couple of last issues, um, adding in some documentation and cleaning some things up. So I think we're now we're now testing against staging, right, Stephen? Uh, we are now testing against staging. Yes. Yeah. 
and I have not seen any crashes or any issues. So I think we're good. Cool. Uh, except for the new swap is fast enough that it was exposing other bugs, but we fixed those. Um, Content-based chunking. Yes, um, actually didn't get very far because uh, I caught something. Uh, so last week was very sleepy. Uh, but uh, we did finalize the design of how actually important export should work. Uh, I for on on the YPFS side, this is actually part of the of the dagger tool. This is how they communicate uh, between each other. Um, uh, I already did some PRs uh, in the dependencies of YPFS and uh, getting ready to push the final PR for um, for YPFS itself. Uh, I know, Stephen, you're busy. I am not really blocked on anything because uh, I know what the what the design is like. Uh, so you know, if you have if you have better stuff to review, review the better stuff. Um, on the dagger itself, uh, a little bit on, of progress on uh, stacked uh, chunker interfaces, basically how to be able to uh, specify multiple inline. It still doesn't work correctly uh, the way I envision it to hopefully another couple days uh, should be this should land and this pretty much will conclude uh, the 0 0.1 uh, version of, of dagger uh, being able to put stuff into ypfs and being able to specify multiple uh, junkers one after another and uh, that's all i have right now uh start us Kashka's left a note saying he's not uh, attending today. Got it. Uh, then rest IP fast. Mark, uh, we can't hear you. You're muted. Let's see, is that better? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so phase 1.0 of the grant is complete pending the uh, report, uh, the milestone report that I'll be submitting on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. And uh, we're also working on two blog posts. One will be on the IPFS.io blog and one will be on from us at Equilibrium um, to go, you know, go out together. Um, as of right now, we have the IPFS path set up. So the folder, the repo folder. Um, the ID API, the version API, and the Swarm API are either, you know, done or very close to being done in progress. PubSub is up on deck. And then from there, we're going to get block, DAG, refs, and bit swap in phase 1.2, which should enable people to create IPLD applications or something like them. Um, we're waiting on a couple, or at least one major decision from Protocol Labs, which is the uh, somebody linked to a thread that was the indexing by multi-hash or not, or how to index blocks and things like that. Um, what we're doing now is just keeping things as idiomatic to the Rust language as possible and keeping things consistent with um, Stevens and uh, Volker's recommendations. But we're, you know, we're going to move on and basically circle back to whatever the decision that's made there, um, unless something happened the last 72 hours or so that I hadn't heard about. Um, so that's basically it. That's where we're at. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> uh, any other initiatives? I take that as a no. Uh, then we have design review proposals, which I have one, which is what we just talked about. Um, uh, so I don't want to uh, beat this too much, um, but we do need to have this discussion. Uh, uh, the basic issue is um, we are planning on switching to multi hashes in the data store, uh, but this does um, throw away uh, useful information that is namely the uh, 
codec. Um, so we should have a meeting uh, where we discuss the trade-offs here and decide if we want to continue going forward and switching to CIDs in the box store, or if we want, or sorry, uh, to multi-hash the box store, or if we want to do something like switch to CID v1 in the box store, um, uh, just to like make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of the trade-offs. Uh, it's kind of at the 11th hour, but we need to have a discussion just to make sure we're all on the same page. So please read this issue, read all this background, um, and if you're interested, uh, write your name here, and I'll schedule a meeting. Isn't there like a in-between solution where you just like in the key you separate the codec from the multi hash key so that you can still like search the data store for the multi hash that you're looking for and then if you need the multi codec you also have it there. Uh, so yes, th that's one of the solutions proposed here where we could have we could store the block along with a set of codecs for the block. Yeah, they yeah. have been used, the, right? Yeah. Yeah, the problem there is that like we don't get this atomic write thing unless like the the, the only way to do this with like like separate writes basically is to have two mm. writes where like you write the block and then separately you write like um, uh, some additional codec information. So you write like uh, slash uh, slash codex slash multi hash slash the actual codec. Yeah, um, it's almost like it, it, well, just going to like a data space. The thing is like the what we are preventing is effectively mm -hmm. having data that is read by multiple codecs. Yep. But, but at least for, for now and for the foreseeable future, the like 99, not 99% 99 of the cases will be one codec for each piece of data. Yeah. Well, so that's what the, the alternative solution here is just use the ID v1. So th there are two problems right now. One is two codecs, two is two versions. The versions are really the problem. The codecs are less of the problem. Um, yeah. So, like, what we could do is just say everything switch to CID v1 inside the block store, uh, and that will get rid of 99.9% .9 of the problems. There's still the problem of, like, I would like to be able to, like, take a Unix of a DAG, turn it into raw blocks, and then build my own custom DAG on top of this. It's kind of like a special, like, almost like a car format where, like, I can have this really unbalanced whatever DAG that, like, you don't necessarily have to understand all, like, and you know, I don't want you to understand all the codecs for, um, but then I can sort of, like, take all of those blocks turn it into a sequence of like raw blocks, build this nice, mm -hmm. even like easy to traverse stack on top of that and tell you to fetch that. Uh, so that's, that's a feature that I would like to be able to have, which would like require something like like this. Um, but yeah, basically we have to walk through all the different trade-offs here. Uh, that's it. This is a totally optional meeting. Um, attend it if you're interested in the problem and you uh, like it, it affects you. Um, otherwise, like, yeah. Well, sign me up, I'm interested on <laughs> like I've been part of this journey <laughs> for <Yes. laughs> for many years. <laughs> I want to see the end of the story. <laughs> uh, Stephen, yes. the thing you just said uh, that I want to have X. Uh, can you put this in the issue? Like put it in words because ah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, it will. It's not something many have thought about, myself included, so it will help him get to think about. I put in a small request that uh, Jonas from the Equilibrium Rust IPFS team could attend this meeting as well. Uh, what's, what would be the best way to ensure that he gets the information of like where and when that meeting would be? Um, get, uh, well, get, so his e get his yeah, email into the pad. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, could you put his email in this pad here? Okay, I'll do that. Sounds good. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, no, like, um, yeah, this is this is mostly around, so this is a meeting around making the decision. Uh, so, like, uh, if you come to the meeting and you're asking a lot of questions, um, yeah, we're probably not going to answer a lot of questions. So, read up, read through very carefully uh, all the context. Yeah, uh, I think you would, uh, yeah. uh, I don't think he'll be disruptive or anything. I think he just wants to know. He's okay. the one that will be implementing it, so I think it would be good to have him there. No, no I just want to set the tone. Like the, the, just the way we run these, these design decision meetings are basically like, okay, everyone who joins tries to have most of the context ahead of time, and then we, like, we basically say, we will come to a decision by the end of this meeting. Uh, right. And it's a forcing function that we use. So like, because like async, you kind of just drive things on forever and ever. If you have a synchronous meeting where you just all like talk about it, you can just force it and say it's done. Uh, but yeah, that sounds great. I would love to get their opinions on it.
Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll pass that on, make sure that he knows. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Blockers asks, any alerts for oh, go XS 0.5, anything you think might be dropped? Uh, Steven, if you take a look at the pure filtering uh, PR in CAD DHT, we should make sure that that's where it needs to be. Thank you for the reminder. Write that down. Anything else? Just a heads up, guys. Uh, I'm going to be putting docs together over the next week um for the release so i'm probably going to be pinging various people in this call about just to clear up things that i don't understand like what is bit swap and how do you actually spell it things like that so yeah just keep a look out for that uh there's something you should look at um what's i can have to find the actual update on github be shocked Okay. Uh, here is an initial update to the uh, change log. I will put it in the notes under the release section. Um, it'll also send in the chat. Uh, if, if you're interested in seeing what's coming in the release, it doesn't have everything. Um, but it has the uh, errata, all the stuff that people need to know, or most of the stuff that people need to know. Um, so, like, it's, it's things that might be interesting. It could be how like previous context and IPFS, IPFS, like, this will tell you, like, the important things that, like, may be changing or may affect you. Um, cool. Okay. Okay. So, that's box asks. Uh, actually, another ask I have there is, um, okay. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, please contribute to release notes. If you know if anything has changed that I don't, please update it. Uh, and I'm running over. Anyone have any questions? Handy parking lots. Wheelies. Parties. No? Okay. Uh, then I think that's it. I will let you all go. Thank you. Bye-bye.